Greetings, my excellent friends. My name is Gavarok Febinor. I'm the large one stood in the middle. And this is the story of Hildebrand Manderville. We stand here, our intrepid crew of inspectors, Hildebrand, Briardian, Nashu, Ellie, and my ever-loyal Gala Kitten on my shoulder. Drenched in the Thanalan rain, pondering a sad, wilted bouquet of flowers left to honour a son taken far too soon. As we consider this sad state of affairs, the main emotion that moves through our heads is one of bewilderment. Uh, having just listened to the dread portents of a grieving old lady of questionable mental stability. She spoke of Sildi, a city long ruined, having lost the war to the ancient Uldans, suggesting that this phantom thief is in fact a ghost, a phantom itself from Sildi, come to exact revenge on behalf of its long dead nation. I, for one, am shitting myself. Let's see what the others think. Shades from Sildi. Living men turned to zombies. The old crones lost not just her son, but her wits as well. Hildebrand is on to something. Or at least he thinks he is. Sibling strife. It's all becoming clear to me now. That dear old woman's testimony has confirmed that which I had expected from the start. Like a zombie picking away at its rotting flesh, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, has peeled away the foul scab of uncertainty to reveal the truth within. After all, the truth, dare say, is in our heads. It's in our heads, in our heads. Zombie, 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 hippie, hippie, hippie. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I shall continue. Open your ears and feast your minds on the fruits of my flawless deduction. Him, <laughs> Our phantom thief is a phantom indeed. A wayward spirit caught between the realm of the living and dead for nigh on centuries since meeting a tragic end on the battlefield. As such, our course of action is clear. We must placate this tortured soul that it might abandon its vengeful vendetta and travel to the next life in peace. But what is the true nature of the spectre's grievances? Without this knowledge, we cannot hope to assuage its rancor. Let us begin our search of the Thaumaturge's guild. Doubtless the tomes there contain a wealth of knowledge on the ill blood between the sibling nations. Notwithstanding the abject stupidity of everything else that came out of your mouth, some knowledge of Sildi might serve us well. Go research as you will, and do take as much time as you need. You can count on me, Inspector Briardian. Whatever knowledge is to be gleaned at the Guild, it shall not escape my Inspector's eye. I'd be much obliged if you could keep him out of my way, Gavarok. I have some real investigating to do, and would prefer to be free of distractions. We shall follow Hildebrand to the Thaumaturgist Guild, not as a babysitter, but because we genuinely think he may be on to something. Besides, it would be nice to reconnect with my old friends, the Coco Banana Brothers. Hello, tiny one. Gods be good! You're the adventurer who saved me back at the ruins! What? Y yes Yes! I... I definitely... I remember you so... so distinctly with your unusually small stature and feather hat. Yes, I am... I am so glad that I saved your life and have never forgotten our fateful encounter. Certainly one of the most lasting impacts on my existence. 
Yes. Um, it's, it's good to see you again. You. Researching the ancient feud between Uldar and Sildi, are you? Why, I'm pleased to say I have more than a passing familiarity with ancient history, which is why I came to you, my good friend who I remember, because I knew you would have some knowledge that would help me. To understand the hi history of sibling nations, one must go back further still, to the birth of their mother nation, Baladia. That's a Baladi long time ago, but okay. The fifth astral era was an age of untold wonders, when the arcane arts burgeoned and great civilizations that commanded such powers flourished. The Age of Enlightenment would not last, however. Power bred avarice, and avarice bred resentment. It culminated in the War of the Magi, which brought the great floods of the Sixth Umbral Calamity, which in turn swallowed once proud nations and left a battered wasteland in its wake. Mages were reviled and persecuted for having caused this catastrophe, with many forced to leave their homelands or face death. It was a small band of those survivors that found their way to Thanalan, where they would found the nation of Baladia some eight centuries gone. Ah, imagine government of mages, by mages, and for mages. Sounds magical. What wonders might have been wrought had Baladian civilization survived to this very day? Alas, this was not to be. A and? What happened next? Hello? Hello? Person who I definitely remember? Why, why, why are you just staring vacantly in the distance? Okay, thaumaturges are weird. Let's go inside. How about you, Assassin's Creed reject? Greetings, traveler. You would learn of the war between Uldar and the fallen Sultanate of Sildi. It would be my pleasure to enlighten you. The two city-states coexisted for several generations until the bad blood between them boiled over, culminating in outright war. As you might deduce from the present state of affairs, Uldar emerged victorious, leaving its once proud sibling nation in smouldering ruins. As the histories tell it, the battles fought between the sister nations were the stuff of nightmares. In a desperate attempt to overcome Uldar's superior numbers, Sildin alchemists devised a most horrific strategy. Employing a frightful formula known as the Trader's Spurn, they brought their fallen warriors back as undead soldiers. Some theories have it that they even employed the potion on those of the living who were too weak or wounded to fight. Send shivers up the spine just thinking about it, no? Is it truly a crowning glory of our fair nation that our forebears were able to emerge victorious against these horrors? Zombies bad. You don't say. It's not every day someone comes to our halls to research Sildi. As a fellow student of history, though, I'm more than welcome to conversation. Baladian civilization flourished in relative peace until his twin sons were born to the royal family. The two were fierce rivals, and when they came of age and their father passed, each one claimed that he was the rightful heir to the throne. With neither son willing to relinquish his claim, they agreed to split their kingdom in two, forming the twin nations of Ulda and Sildi. But not unlike the two proud princes, the sibling nations developed a penchant for rivalry. One, two, princes split before you. That's what I said now. Princes, princes who can't get along. Rhyming's hard now. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what's that you say? You seek knowledge of the bad blood between Uldar and Sildi. I suppose I can spare a moment or two, but take good notes. I'm not fond of repeating myself. Two scales, one of gold, one of silver. The gold of Uldar, weighing prosperity and power. The silver of Sildi, weighing knowledge and power. But the power sought by the two nations differed greatly. Greatly indeed. The power wrought by Uldar and prosperity was that of justice and good. But the power wrought by Sildi knowledge was horrific beyond belief. The power to rip the living soul out of a man and render him a mindless killing machine. On this matter the histories are clear. But riddle me this, my friend. Who writes the histories? And what does this say of the words writ within? Yes, truth can be elusive and fickle as the shifting sands. As one example, did you know that in the war against Sildi, Uldan and Amalja warriors fought side by side? <laughs> Likely you did not. And neither did I until I encountered a faded passage in an ancient text buried deep in our archives. And yet, 
In the histories read by the populace, you will see no mention of this most fascinating fact. Might it be that someone, at some time, deemed this particular truth less than convenient? <laughs> but I've said enough already. So to summarize, Uldar, the winners of the conflict were noble, just, fair, and true. Fighting honorably. And Sildi were miserable necromantic bastards murdering people and then breathing life back into their bones and making them fight without a soul. So the winners of the conflict are all good with no flaws whatsoever and the losers of the conflict were impossibly evil bastards who could not have a scrap of redemption thrust upon them if they drowned themselves in a redemption pool. Hmm. And not a scrap of that is, is, is questionable or propaganda-ish. Interesting. Well, back to Hildebrand. As I shared with him what I had learned. And we compared notes. Excellent listener that Hildebrand is. My ever-loyal associate! Tell me, what have you learned from your questioning of the scholars in these halls? Indeed. As it happens, I have learned much the same. Let us take a moment to review and allow my peerless powers of deduction to work their magic. A war of succession divides the great civilization of Maladia, giving rise to the sibling nations of Uldar and Sildi. The two nations coexist for some generations until ill blood boils over, culminating in outright war. <laughs> good God, what is that good for? Daunted by Uldar's superior military might, military might, if I could learn how to pronounce words, Sildi employs their advanced alchemical knowledge to horrific ends, transforming their own citizens, alive and dead, into a fearsome undead legion. <clears throat> yes, I believe I have it. The facts at hand have led me to one unassailable conclusion. Our phantom thief is a descendant of doomed Sildi, who seeks vengeance against those who reduced his countrymen to slavering zombies. To pacify his soul and send him peacefully to the next world, there is but one course of action. We must find the Sildine statesman who conceived this dreadful stratagem and have him apologize to the thief in person for the suffering he has wrought. A brilliant plan. Perhaps you'd like to go find yourself a shovel and dig this statesman out of the grave himself? Leaving aside the nonsense of spirits and spectres, it appears increasingly likely that our quarry shares some link to Sildi. His garish garb is no doubt meant to evoke the silver scales of the fallen sultanate. This Sildine connection would also serve to explain the rare knowledge of Baladian relics our thief clearly possesses. But what of the murder victims? What common thread amongst them could have occurred the ire of our adversary. A few people in town spoke of a man sighted calling upon his victims in the past few days. Those who saw him said he had a most frightened air about him. Wait. Yes? It's coming to me. Of course! My keen investigator's senses ring out with a voice loud and clear. This man, Miss Ellie, speaks of. Just might know something! You really should stop thinking so hard. You're, you're like to strain a brain muscle. Miss Ellie, who is this man? And where might we find him? My sources identified the man as Guguria, a travelling merchant known to frequent Horizon. Should we pay him a visit? Hmm? <laughs> On the Horizon! 134 gil, which I will, of course, send the bill to Hildebrand. After all, I am his ever-loyal associate, which means I am working for him officially now, which means that all of my expenses should come out of his wallet. My keen instincts tell me that Master Guguria's testimony will be key to a monumental breakthrough in our investigation. Yes, I shall employ the ancient Mandeville art of parlay to skillfully extract the information we require. It 
Yes? If you've got business, make it quick. My time's too valuable to, to waste chatting with every stranger who passes by. Forgive us, good sir. My name is Ellie, a reporter with the Mithra Line. Never blinking or seeing, you know the rest. I was wondering if we could trouble you with just a few questions. Was it for love or money that you killed them? Yes, you, the thief of many faces. Me? A thief? What is this nonsense? I don't know who you are, but I ain't got the time or the patience for this mummery. Now, if you'll excuse me, an important client awaits. I thought I recognised that voice. Veteran viewers may be wondering just how it was that your intrepid storyteller was able to figure out which voice to give this character before even seeing her face or learning her name. Perhaps it has something to do with the 15 second pause and panicked glance to the right that happened before the line was read. <clears throat> professional air, professional air. Lady Dorilda, well met indeed. Uh, pray tell, whatever brings you to these environs this fair evening? What? Why? Why, I live here, you ham headed half wit! Inspector Briardian, this is an unexpected pleasure. Uh, do you have some business with my associate here, pray tell? Gugurea, we can discuss business after. Pray lend the inspector here, the handsome one, whatever assistance he requires. But, Lady Derilda, what about... Ah, yes, my dear Maria's name day present. I had in mind one of the prize pieces from S. Thames latest seasonal collection. You would be able to procure one for me, yes? Or shall I eliminate the middleman and make the trip to Ulda myself? <gasps> I'll say it just once more, Gukuria. I expect you to give the inspector and his companions your full assistance. They, yes, even the stupid one, helped me regain something truly priceless. Yes, something more valuable than any mere trinket. Well, 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 MVP to the Lady Derilda. All right, all right, I'll tell you what I know. But you didn't hear it from me, got it? I was looking into the killing on behalf of a client of mine. The thief's got himself some of that zombie dust. The trader's sperm, was it? Spurn. Spurn. N. Very, very important consonant there. And his cards speak of five victims. Got me to thinking. Sildi, five victims. Aye. The Arbiters of Truth. The Arbiters of Truth. Must confess I'm not familiar with that name. Aye, few would be. On account of them being something of a secret society and all. Influential personages of the Sultanate, you see. Working from the shadows to keep false knowledge about the uldar sildi conflict from reaching the ears of folk like you and me. False knowledge? Pray tell just what sort of knowledge might that be? House balls, don't make me say no more. I've got a family to feed. Very well, just tell us one last thing. Who hired you and where can we find him? Hob! His name's Hob. When he heard what I said, he told me that he was going to set sail for Limsa with his five best sellswords to guard his back. He said there were many prying eyes at the airship docks. Said he had a private ship docked and waiting for him at Vesper Bay. But, but, but remember, he didn't hear none of this from me. This man Hob must be one of the killer's targets. Doubtless he also knows the identity of the remaining one. I doubt that. They say the Arbiters are so secretive they don't even know each other's true identities. Now don't ask me how all that works, but Hobbs got high ranking friends in the brass blades. Once he heard the victims had been all zombified, he panicked. I guess he knew that he'd be next. Thank you very much, kind sir. Once again, the ancient Mandeville art of parley has procured for us a key morsel of knowledge. Let us seek out this Hob fellow and see what he can share with us. And let us hurry. The man's life is in danger even as we speak.
What about his other life? I would hear what this hob fellow has to say. Come, my ever loyal associate, let us away to Vesper Bay with all speed. Given that a speedy mount was necessary, the logical choice was the polar bear. As we took to the sky, not sparing a single moment of thought as to how exactly a polar bear attained flight capabilities, we sailed through the air in a westwards direction. Returning once again to the miserable town of Vesper Bay, home to, among other things, a secret hideout that shall not be spoken of. But before we arrived, we encountered something. M Master Hob, is everything quite all right? No, stand back, Ellie! Hunger! I hunger for your brains. Well, that's that's generally considered a bad thing. Damn! There's no saving the man. Gavarok, do what you must. One brief murdering later. Yes, my first-hand knowledge of zombies tells me this particular shade of green is unmistakably that of the undead. It would seem we were a few moments late to the scene. A message. And then there was one. Mm. <laughs> unmistakable feeling of being watched. There it is again. Hmm? Is something the matter, the inspect is something the matter, Inspector? Indeed, Nashu, there is. Ever since I picked up the trail of the Phantom Thief, I've had this fleeting sense. A sense that someone or something is watching us. I must confess I knew where Hildebrand was coming from. I too often felt watched during my adventures. As though at all times there was a broadcasting view directed at me, capturing my face, my activities, my voice, everything about me, and sending it out to whoever cared to listen. The thief might be close at hand. We should be careful. For the moment, let us return and report our findings to Miss Phyllis. Secret society or no, knowing the identities of its members may yet lead us to the final victim. I too would best return to the Mithril Eye. Let's meet up again after. I'll see what new clues I can uncover in the meantime. You will do nothing of the sort, Miss Ellie. These streets are far too dangerous for you to walk alone. Inspector! Inspector! I'll go with her! If you insist, Nashu, then I give my leave. But pray be wary, not just of the thief, but of Miss Ellie. She has quite the temper, as we both know. I'm right here, you miserable wank! As Ellie began to say some words that are much too inappropriate for this broadcast, uh, we, we, we turn our attention instead to Briardian. Miss Ellie, there is something I must tell you when this case is over. Be safe, and promise me that you will not attempt anything rash, as you did that time when the Fiend took aim at my own life. Ah, yes, that, that time, that, that definite time in which no shenanigans were going on. Your life, inspect. Ah, yeah, the ghost of Del Sol. Yes, that was quite the ordeal, wasn't it? I'll be careful. I promise. I eagerly await the day when I hear what it is that you would share with me. A secret vow? Ho <laughs> ho Consider my interest piqued as well, good inspector. Now let us be off. Miss Phyllis awaits our report. Indeed. As usual, our reputation for getting things done and emerging triumphant has... Uh, 
been completely averted as we failed to prevent uh, the fourth murder and are practically no steps closer to apprehending the thief. But nonetheless, we're trying. And that is worth something, I hope. Some shifty-looking fellow was eyeing the vaults before, but he took off faster than a fleeing cactuar as soon as my gaze met his. Aye, uh, just like I cowed many a galleon on the plains of... Oh, oh, it's you. The news of Hobbs' death will not sit well with Miss Felice, but a gentleman must do what a gentleman must do. A fourth victim. Sal, have mercy. Were you able to glean aught of a connection to the other victims? The Arbiters of Truth? No, it cannot be. Somebody, help! Oh dear. Miss Ellie? The voice came from the direction of the vault. We must hurry. The vault is not a good place for which, uh, for, for there to be an emergency. But what was Ellie doing there? Miss Ellie, are you hurt? That man... I only thought to ask him a few questions. Before I knew what was happening, he was upon me. I could only... Bash his brains with a conveniently placed bottle of mead, it would seem. Ha <laughs> ha! Remind me not to get on your bad side, Miss Ellie. That said, is Nashu not with you? She saw a figure lurking in the shadows and went off in pursuit before I could stop her. This man wears the armour of a sultan scorned squire, yet his face is unfamiliar to me. Something is amiss. Oh my. The, the thief of many faces? To think we would find our man like this? Thrice and again did the fiend elude our grasp, but no more! By virtue of a gentleman's ingenious deductions and a lady's pugilistic puissance, I declare this case closed. I return this sachet to you, Miss Felice. Whilst the gesture was appreciated, in the end, it proved superfluous to my cracking of the case. Whoa! While you're at it, is there anything else of immense value that you'd like to wantonly destroy? Oh my. Incompetence wins the day! What? What is the meaning of this? Ingenious. A double disguise. Planted by the thief to throw us off the trail, no doubt. This is Gooigoo. One of my most capable men, apart from his terrible name. I assigned him to guard the vault and outfitted him with an ample supply of demasking dust. It is inconceivable that the thief could so easily elude his grasp. Unless the thief was not wearing a mask. Speaking of which, has anyone seen Miss Ellie? No. That's impossible. Of course. It all makes perfect sense. With the Phantom Thief to thank for her burgeoning readership and rise through the ranks of the Mithril Eye, Miss Ellie could not bear to face the possibility of her story of a lifetime coming to an end. Thus she hatched a plan to... She was right here. She was right here and she stole away while we were all... My lady! The vault has been breached! The wise man's whisper... It's gone. For her foul crimes against the Sultanate, I hereby declare Ellie of the Mithril Eye, the thief of many faces, an enemy of the state. Deploy all troops and do not rest until she is in custody. Uh, but, but this seems a bit premature. And now the game is truly afoot. This one we don't know. Uh, bah! What is the meaning of all this racket and rumpus? 
And just as we were about to make our triumphant return. Isn't that so, Enkidu? <laughs> well, now this is just an overwhelming amount of villainy. Meanwhile, Nashu Makaraka. Miss Ellie! Miss Ellie! That shadow you said you saw? I think it was just a Dormouse. Ow! To think he'd literally stumble face first onto the second mask. His good fortune truly knows no end. But not to worry. Yes, I dare say the Phantom Thief has another trick or two up his sleeve. As our thief takes the form of Nashu, unbeknownst to us all, and steals away into the night. We enter an interesting sort of Columbo situation, you and I, as we know more now about what's going on. And our intrepid characters, including myself, which is a strange sort of fourth wall shattering one foot on either side of the door uncomfortable dilemma. But nonetheless, we shall return and see what our good friend Nashu has in store for us. Fare thee well. <laughs>